For more information on tutoring or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, please visit MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So we mentioned that solving Schrodinger's equation gives many possible wave functions or orbitals, atomic orbitals. And each of these is described by a set of three quantum numbers. Three quantum numbers. And these quantum numbers are according to a hierarchy. What that means is that the subsequent quantum numbers are dependent on those before them. Now you'll notice a little asterisk here at the three for quantum numbers. And the reason why that's there is because we'll talk about a fourth one later. Um, but here, it's the reason why I put three here and we'll talk about the fourth one later is because the first three quantum numbers describe the actual orbital or orbitals, whereas the fourth one does not. The fourth one describes the electrons specifically, so we'll get to that later. Okay, so the first quantum number is the principal quantum number represented by the letter n, lowercase n. The principal quantum number is a positive integer. So that means we're starting with n equals 1, and we can go n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, so on and so forth. Now, the principal quantum number is related to the size and energy of the orbital. So as n increases, the energy increases. Why is that? Well, as n increases, the orbital size increases, which means that the electron is more likely to be further away from the nucleus. And an electron is attracted to the nucleus. It's positively, the nucleus is positively charged. The electrons are negatively charged. They are attracted to each other. So the electrons are further away if n is larger. And that's not a, a position the electrons want to be in, right? That's not favorable. They don't want to be away from the positive charge. They want to be closer. So because they're not kind of where they want to be, then the energy level is higher. Okay. So the principal quantum number, um, if we're talking about en quint quantum number n equals 1 or n equals 2, we can also refer to them as um, energy levels. So energy level 1 or the first energy level, or the second energy level, third energy level. We can also think about them being called shells, the first shell, second shell, third shell. Okay. So, so if you see those terms, that's kind of what they're referring to. Okay. The second quantum number is the angular momentum quantum number represented by a lowercase l. So for a given n value, that's an important part here, for a given l value, n value, excuse me, for a given l, n value, all integers from 0 to n minus 1 are the possible l values. Okay. So the, the fact that it says for a given n value, that means that the l quantum number value is dependent on the n value, right, or the possible l values are dependent on the n that you're talking about. So for example, if you have n equals 1, what are your possible L values? Well, you have to start at 0, right? So 0 is, is a possible value. The next value would be number uh, would be 1, right? But you're limited. The maximum is n minus 1. What's n? 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So that means 1 is not, a, is not an actual possible value. So the only L value possible for n equals 1 is 0, whereas for n equals 2, start at 0, and 1 is actually possible because n minus 1 is 1. So that, that, that value is possible, but it's the, the last possible value. You can imagine that for n equals 3, the possible L values are 0, 1, and 2. For, four, for n equals 4, you'd have 0, 1, 2, 3, right? so on and so forth. Now, the angular momentum quantum number L is related to the shape of the orbital. And it's often referred to as the energy sublevel, because it also relates to some extent to energy, um, or the uh, subshell. Right? So where n describes the energy level in the shell, l describes the energy sublevel or subshell. Okay? Each value of l has a corresponding letter, which we can see here to the right, value of l and its corresponding letter. So 0. If you have L equals 0, the corresponding letter is S. You have a value of 1, that's P, 2 is D, 3 is F, 4 is G, um, 
5 and onward, actually 4 and onward is just in alphabetical order. So there's 6, that'd be I, and then further JKL, just alphabetically. Um, but we normally won't worry about anything past F. So, in fact, I don't think we're ever going to go past that. Okay, so um, the reason why that's important is that each letter corresponds to a different shape, right? That's kind of how this and this going right shape is is sort of determined by the letter and we'll see that in more detail in the next video okay. so the third quantum number the magnetic quantum number m sub l that is dependent on the quantum number before it which is l so its possible values are all the integers from negative l through 0 to positive l so for L equals 1, for instance, the M sub L values start at negative L, so that would be negative 1. And then we go to, in the positive direction to all the different possible values. So we have negative 1, the next one would be 0, and then we, we're, we go to positive 1. So the possible M sub L values are negative L, negative 1, all the way to positive L, positive 1. Right? So for L equals 2, we'd have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and positive 2. Now, the magnetic quantum number m sub l is related to the orientation of the orbital. The orientation of the orbital in 3D space. So each m sub l value represents a separate orbital. A separate orbital. And orbitals can be represented as lines, boxes, or circles that can be filled with electrons, which are designated by arrows. We'll see that more later, and I'll kind of show you what's going on here. So each of these m sub l values, negative 1, 0, and positive 1, are, have a corresponding orbital, which I've represented here just by lines that you can fill with arrows. And each orbital can have a maximum of two electrons in it. So if I were to completely fill these, I'd fill these like this. You have one electron going up there, up, up, and then an electron going down, down. And each of these arrows represents an electron. Why are these arrows, and why is one pointing up and one pointing down in each of these, and why did I fill them in that way that I did? That's all stuff that we'll learn more about later. Okay. So let's kind of go through a little summary of what's going on with these values. So if n equals 1, what are the possible l values? It's just 0. Okay. I'd encourage you to try to do this on your own before going through this in detail. Maybe try to like pause the video and guess kind of what would come up, come up next. So this L has a corresponding letter, and and zero's corresponding letter is S. So the orbital notation is given as N L. So here we have one, and zero corresponds to S. The orbital notation would be one S. What are the possible M sub L values? Well, it would just be zero, right? Because it's dependent on L. L is zero. Uh, so it's just zero. The number of orbitals in this in this S subshell is just this one m sub l value, right? So that's just one. Okay. And the total number of orbitals in that shell is just one, right? because it's the only subshell, right? Um, and there's only one shell. So what's the maximum electron capacity? If each of these orbitals can have two electrons, the max that this one can have is two. So if the n value is equal to 2, the possible l values are 0 and 1. If, if you have the l value of 0, you have the orbital notation would be 2s. If you have it for uh, n, and n equals 2 and l equals 1, the orbital notation would be 2p, the 2p orbital. So how many 2s orbitals do we have? Just one. And its m sub l value is 0. Right? We only have one 2s orbital. Oh, we'll get to that value in just a second. What about 2p? How many 2p orbitals do we have? Well, the possible m sub l values for l equals 1 are negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So that's three orbitals in that subshell, in that p subshell. So the total number of orbitals in this shell, in the n equals 2 shell, is 1 plus 3, which is 4. Okay. And if we have four total orbitals in this shell, what's the maximum electron capacity in this n equals 2 shell? Well, four orbitals two electrons each, that would be eight. Okay. For three, we can have the possible L values as zero, one, and two.
we're talking about 3 and 0, that would be the 3s orbital. 3 and 1 would be the 3p orbital. 3 and 2 would be describing 3d orbitals. So how many 3s orbitals do we have? 0. How many 3p orbitals do we have? 3. Negative 1, 0, and positive 1. How many 3d orbitals do we have? Well, what are the possible m sub l values for 2? We'd have negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. So how many orbitals are in each of these subshells, the sp and d subshells? We got 1, 3, and 5. And if we add those up, we get a total of 9 total orbitals in that shell. Each of those can hold two electrons, so that's a maximum electron capacity of 18. Okay. So I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to reveal the, the values for 4, and hopefully you can think through them. So we can see this going on here. I'm just going to reveal them so that you can see what's going on, and you should reason your way through them on your own. Okay. What I want you to notice is that the number of orbitals in the subshell will be equal to 2L plus 1. So if you know um, the certain L value, you plug it into this formula, you'll get that value. So if you have, for instance, um, 3, 0, right? Um, if you have L equals 0, you'll have 2 times 0 plus 1, which is 0 plus 1, which is 1. If you have 2, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So that'll give you the number of orbitals in that subshell. How do you get the total number of orbitals in that shell? That's just n squared, right? The shell is is the n value, and you just take that number, square it, and that's the total number of orbitals in that shell. And you'll notice that the maximum electron capacity is just two times that, so that would be equal to two n squared. So those up there are kind of helpful things to keep in mind when you're thinking about what's going on with these different energy levels and shells, subshells, and how many orbitals there are in each of these, then the orbital not notations. So, um, again, this is all so far just the orbitals we're talking about. The fourth quantum number, which describes electron spin and is denoted as m sub s, will be described later. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you, and happy studying.